Quinton here makes sustainable clothing. Yep. His shipping company, FedEx, has set a goal of having carbon neutral operations by 2040. Great news. This sustainability effort makes Quinton very happy. Nice. FedEx, where now meets next. Extreme weight gain can be a combination of so many factors, including lifestyle, trauma, and mental health. The rise of ultra-processed foods hasn't helped either. In some cases, obesity can even be inherited. What happens is that like someone may have a genetic predisposition to weight gain, and that means that like the way that their hunger and fullness hormones interact with their brain is also different, right? But then what really exacerbates it or doesn't exacerbate it is your day-to-day -day environment as well. That's Dr. Disha Narang, an endocrinologist and the director of obesity medicine at Northwestern Medicine Lake Forest Hospital. The epidemic of obesity doesn't seem promising, especially in the next five to 10 years. We are expected to have 50% of our population in the obese category, not even overweight, but obese. And so I think there is a very great need for therapeutics to address that. Right now, we have some of the best therapeutics available that have been deemed safe for longer-term weight management. While Narang says bariatric surgery is one of the most effective treatments for weight loss, there are many more less invasive options. We now have oral and injectable medications that can be safely used. But Narang says none of them are a quick fix. You know, the way I usually word it is, if it took somebody 40 years to gain to a certain weight, well, you know, we're not going to take it off in three to six months. That's not how it works. This is a chronic disease that they've dealt with for most of their lives. We can't just fix it in a few months. However, if you spent any time on social media recently, you've probably seen posts about a miracle weight loss drug. Ozempic is an anti-diabetic and anti-obesity medication that's taken Hollywood by storm. The drug helps stabilize blood pressure, which makes it very effective for treating type 2 diabetes. It also works at the level of the gut, and so it slows down gastric emptying. It makes you feel fuller, faster, and then it also works at the level of the brain and the appetite center of the brain. And so it decreases the stimulation by the hunger hormone, ghrelin, and some of the other hormones that it interacts with. And so overall, like all those three things put together, people tend to crave various foods less, people feel fuller, faster, and their blood sugars end up being in better control as well. But just as with all other treatment options, Ozempic is not a magic pill. I have enough patients on this medication or just, you know, this class of drugs that haven't lost any weight or they don't feel well on it. And, you know, I think it's being touted a lot as a miracle drug or a magic drug. There's no such thing. Any of my successful patients who have sort of gone through treatment, everything, they have completely transformed their day-to-day -day lives. Narang's patients make lifestyle changes that include how they eat, what they eat, and how they move throughout the day. I always say, you know, like the medication might be a small fraction of the whole piece of the pie, but what someone is doing day to day in their environment is the majority of it. And so the medication certainly can make it easier because it decreases the way that people crave food, the way that people experience hunger versus fullness. And so all of that is a huge bonus, of course. However, if you want to be successful, you've got to have, you know, a very, very strict day-to-day -day routine as well. And not everyone can tolerate the medication. Just like any other drug, Ozempic has side effects that some patients can't overcome. One of the most common side effects is stomach upset. So people may feel queasy. People may have, you know, nausea, vomiting. Some people could have constipation. Some people could have diarrhea. So stomach upset tends to be the most common thing. Some people might have a little bit more reflux or heartburn. And so that tends to be one of the major reasons why people might stop the medication. But for those who are able to weather the side effects, Narang says Ozempic is a long-term medication, not a fast pass to weight loss. When I tell patients, I talk about how they're going to eat for the next 20 years, how they're going to exercise for the next 20 years, potentially be on this medication for several years as well. I mean, nobody bats an eye to taking a cholesterol medication long term or a blood pressure medication long term. So the stigma around weight and so the way we view weight really needs to change and it needs to be seen as a chronic disease that's worthy of treatment, just like anything else. 
Narang says we need to change the cultural conversation around weight loss. Having a healthy body should be less about vanity and more about long-term wellness. Whereas I think, you know, some of the stuff that's gone viral on social media, it's been about getting into like the best body and like into various outfits and that sort of thing. And I will say like, you know, the celebrities that are putting this out there, they have all their trainers and fancy dietitians and a very strict program that they follow. It's not that they just took a drug and lost weight. That's just not how it works. Unfortunately, that hasn't been a main message on social media. People looking to quickly lose a couple pounds are showing off their great results using Ozempic. But since many of them haven't made the lifestyle changes needed for sustainable weight loss, they gain the weight right back as soon as they stop the medication. It basically helps to suppress that hunger hormone. And so if something's pushing that hunger hormone down, the second you take off that thing, your hunger hunger hormone is going to go all the way back up. And so that's what happens, right? Like your stomach isn't emptying as slow anymore. So you're going to be a little hungrier or, you know, the hunger hormones is not as suppressed anymore. So you're going to feel hungrier too. You're not going to feel as full as you may have, you know, when you were on the medication. Yet people continue to tout these medications as miracle drugs. Ozempic's been around for over a decade, but Narang says the sudden popularity on social media has caused issues for her patients. More people than ever are getting off-label prescriptions for Ozempic and similar medications, which has contributed to an unprecedented demand that drug companies are finding hard to keep up with. In fact, toward the end of 2022, there was an Ozempic shortage that ended up lasting for six months, well into 2023. When there was a shortage of Ozempic, there are other GLP-1 analogs that you can use, you know, for diabetes therapy. But what happened was that there was a downstream effect that, okay, well, if this patient can't get Ozempic, then we're going to give something else. And so all of those medications have seen shortages as well. We've certainly dealt with the repercussions of that from the medical standpoint, because our patients with diabetes are not getting their medication in a timely manner. And so there certainly is significant value for these medications for long-term weight management, but this is not meant to be taken for you know a couple of weeks. Narang says there's a larger conversation to be had about our society's views on rapid weight gain and loss. But for now, she hopes the public realizes there's no shortcut to a healthier life. You can find more information about Dr. Disha Narang and all of our guests on our website, RadioHealthJournal.org. For more behind the scenes, follow Radio Health Journal on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our writer-producer is Kristen Farah. Our production manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Nancy Benson. Coming up next week on Radio Health Journal... They helped us with everything. She was seven years old and had to take about 20 to 30 pills a day and didn't know how to swallow pills. So they helped us manage that process. Children's hospitals do a lot more than cure diseases. Then pickleball is taking over America, but it's also causing a lot of injuries. You'll see people play for four, five, six hours, and they'll get these overuse type injuries like tendonitis, bursitis of the shoulder, then we'll start to see rotator cuff tears. All that and more on Radio Health Journal. I'm Elizabeth Westfield, host of Radio Health Journal. If you enjoy listening to Radio Health Journal, you'll also like our sister show, Viewpoints, which covers a wide array of topics from education to history to the environment. Here's a preview of what they're covering this week on Viewpoints especially these young people who are being bombarded with these messages to buy Shein, to buy these products. The multi-pronged approach to making real change in the fast fashion industry. Then. What they're basically telling us as a speaker and a listener is, hold on, I need a lot of neural activation for this. The deeper meaning behind our uhs and ums. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth this week on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. Listen to Viewpoints on your favorite radio station, iTunes and Stitcher. And that's Radio Health Journal for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram to learn more. And check Apple Podcasts, Google Play and Spotify for a library of past programs. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and information about our guests at RadioHealthJournal.org. 
Join us again next week for another edition of Radio Health Journal. We make USAA insurance to help you save. Take advantage of discounts when you cover your home and your ride. Discover how we're helping members save at USAA.com bundle. USAA. Restrictions apply.